This lesson deals with the properties of resistors. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 2 starting on page 4. In our last lesson we introduced the ideal concept of resistance. In this lesson we're going to take a look at a thing called a resistor which is the physical device. Resistors can be approximated under many conditions as ideal resistances. All types of materials can be used to make resistors, but carbon is probably the most common. A typical carbon composition or carbon film resistor is usually cylindrical in nature and has multicolored bands painted on it, or perhaps a value stamped on it. This is indicating the nominal or typical value. The physical size of the resistor is proportional to its wattage rating, that is the maximum power it can dissipate. The color code is a way to calculate the typical or nominal value of a resistor based on the colored bands painted on it. If you orient the resistor so the colored bands are starting at the left hand side, then we have four colors, we're going to call them A, B, C, and D. For the bands A, B, and C, these are the colors associated with a number. Silver is minus two, gold is minus one, black is zero, brown is one, red is two, orange is three, yellow is four, green is five, blue is six, violet is seven, gray is eight, and nine is white. So if we have a red band to the far left side, that indicates that this digit is a two. If we had an orange band after that, that would be a three. And then if the third band of color was say yellow, that would be 10 to the fourth. And the last band refers to a thing called tolerance. If there's no color, it's indicating a 20% tolerance, silver 10%, and gold 5%. Let me do an example to show you how this works. Suppose that I have a resistor that has a yellow, violet, red, and gold color code. All right, so yellow, if you look on the table above, is 4, violet is 7, and red is 2, and gold is 5%. So what that means is that I have a resistance of 47 times 10 to the 2, Putting that in engineering notation, that would be 4.7 K ohms and a 5% tolerance. In other words, I could take this nominal value and multiply it by 1 minus 0.05 and then 1 plus 0.05. And I get 4.465 K and 4.935 K. In other words, if you were to measure this resistance with a fairly accurate instrument, the value would fall between these two values. Carbon composition and carbon film resistors are usually available in 5, 10, and 20 percent of tolerances. Not every possible value is available. What's listed here are all the combinations of the first two bands. In other words, I could have a 1 and a 0, and then I have 10 raised to a power. So I could get a 10 ohm resistor, a 100 ohm resistor, a 1000 ohm resistor, a 10,000 ohm resistor, a 100,000 ohm resistor, a million ohm resistor, a 10 million ohm resistor. You do the same thing for all these other values here. And then the tolerances are not available in every combination. For the one zero combination, we can get five, 10, and 20%. For the value of one one, it's only available in 5%, five and 10%, and so on. Many of these numbers were picked so that the tolerances would overlap each other when you calculate the range of resistance values. So there's a way to possibly cover the value that you need. There were also precision resistors I've listed here just the values that you could get with 1% resistors. And here you get three places. And then you can multiply these again by powers of 10 and scale it up from very low to very large values. I'd like to talk about some different types of resistors. The first one being carbon composition. These usually are available from 1 to about 20 megohms in 5, 10, and 20% tolerances. The physical size of the resistor is also proportional to its wattage rating, as I mentioned before. Here's roughly the sizes of a 2 watt, 1 watt, half watt, quarter watt, and 8 watt resistor. Here's a cross section cut of a carbon composition resistor. I have an outer jacket. Inside of it is a carbon pellet, which is mixed with a bonding resin, and all this is heated into a unit. The leads, when they're stuck in, also have a gnarled end on it, so it's not easy to pull out the lead once you've uh, formed a pellet. Carbon film resistors are also available from roughly 1 ohm to 20 mega ohms, but they come in 1, 2, and 5% tolerances. They are made by placing a ceramic rod in a methane-filled flask and heating it until a carbon film is deposited on the core. These two are available in half 1 watt and 2 watt sizes. And the third resistance is called a wire-wound resistor. 
And these are typically available from 100 milliohms to about 200K. The tolerance is a 0.1% to 2%. These are made by wrapping wire around a ceramic core and then baking an enamel coating over it. You can achieve some pretty high wattages with these from one watt to maybe 250 watts. By using different thicknesses of wire, you're able to achieve a very low resistance and very high resistance. But we'll see that these types of resistors also have a thing called inductance, and this can cause some problems in different types of circuits when we build them. Let's take a look at an example where we do some calculations of current and power. Suppose I have a 180 ohm resistor, quarter watt, and I put 12 volts across it. Let's find the current that flows through the resistor. That'd be 12 volts divided by 180 by Ohm's law, and that'd be 66.6 .6 milliamps in engineering notation. Power is voltage times current, I squared R or V squared over R. Let's take V squared over R. So I've got the 12 volts squared divided by my resistor value of 180, and that gives me 800 milliwatts. But this is a 250 milliwatt resistor. We're putting more power in than it's rated for. What'll happen is if you wait long enough, the resistor will begin to melt or even catch on fire. And of course, it wouldn't be usable after that. Even if you cooled it down again, uh, the value most likely would change. Let's do another example. Suppose they have that same 180 ohm resistor, and I measure it, and it turns out to be 184.5. What's the maximum voltage and current that I can apply to this without exceeding the quarter watt rating? Well, what is power? Power is V squared over R. So we could then solve for the voltage, multiply the power times the resistance, and then take the square root. So the maximum voltage would be related to the maximum of this quantity. Now, if I know the value is 184.5, then the maximum would be when the power is maximum, which would be the quarter watt rating. That turns out to be about 6.79 volts. So if I have a circuit that has a power supply in it that's only five volts, then I could never get this much voltage across it, and I would have to worry about destroying the resistor. Could also look at it in terms of the current that's available. We could take the second form of Ohm's law and calculate the current as the voltage divided by the resistance. And since the resistance is fixed, then the maximum current occurs when the maximum voltage occurs. That would be 36.8 milliamps. So I've had a circuit that had a current limiter in it and I couldn't draw more than this current, then I have to worry about the wattage rating of the resistor. And these are some properties of resistors. 